Hello, folks, and welcome to the final part of this series, looking at some of the most violent tornadoes that have ever happened in the United States. Of course, we have only gone over uh, tornadoes that have happened in the U.S. in this series. We're looking over 16 of those. We are looking over another four in this video for a grand total of 20, not the near 70 out of all of the F5s and EF5s that have ever happened in the U.S., so... No, this was not a comprehensive list. Sorry about that. Plus, even uh, if I were to go over some of the uh, F5s since 1950, some of them just straight up barely have any information on them. Not really worth talking about, essentially, unfortunately, as much as it would be interesting to do so. So we are also going to start off, as we have been, with our honorable mentions. First up is the Barneveld, Wisconsin F5. This thing had winds estimated to be 300 miles per hour. This 1984 monster was very violent. This thing was, I mean, I, as you can see in this damage photo here in the upper right, just a true monster. Most buildings here gone. Surprisingly, no ground scouring, but a relatively fast mover this thing was. The Heston, Kansas F5 in 1990 has, in my opinion, one of the best tornado photos taken of it of all time. There are not many uh, tornadoes that can claim that, not many as photogenic, I'd say. Bridge Creek Moor is definitely an exception there. That photo of Bridge Creek Moor on the Wikipedia page is just iconic. Then this, this one absolutely is too. I remember seeing this uh, picture as a kid in the early, very early 2000s and going, whoa, that's scary. And it still kind of is too. This thing just is pitch black roiling around. You can just tell it is based on just how it doesn't have a uniform body to it. This thing was supposedly up to 300 miles per hour strong, by the way, around 483 kilometers per hour. A tornado estimated to be, at least on the minimum and a little bit weaker, is the Oakfield, Wisconsin F5 that happened in 1996. Again, on the lower end, it was estimated to be around 265 miles per hour strong. That is 426 kilometers per hour. Estimated to, on the higher end, be, I've seen all the way up to, I think, 325, which is debatable, sure, but I mean, some extreme house removal properties this tornado's had. Also exhibiting some extreme house removal properties is the Xenia F5 that happened in 1974. This thing was a fast-moving multi-vortex behemoth that was even captured on, I believe, the they had the WSR-57? I don't know if they had WSR-74. They might have. I, that might be what the 74-7 means there. Look at that. <laughs> this thing decimated brick homes, as we can see in this damage photo here on the lower right, exhibited even some wind rowing, destroyed apartment buildings, and a high school was still filmed by around four people too, and was called Preliminary F6 by the tornadoologist Dr. Ted Fujita. That is crazy, especially when you consider that this man had just spent five years or more researching tornadoes and coming up with the Fujita scale along, along with Dr. Pearson, or Dr. Parson, apologies about that, if I, if I forgot his name. And, if, and then after saying that, no, I'm only going to go up to F5, it says that this thing might have been F6 is crazy. Of course, this thing is not rated F6. It is rated F5. Fujita said that an F6 would be impossible. Although, this if if there were if there needed to be an F6, I think Xenia and a few others here would definitely fit the bill. The Gwynn, Alabama, tornado it was an F5 that also happened on the same day as Xenia. This thing exhibited all of the worst properties a tornado could possibly exhibit. A violent, fast-moving, nighttime tornado. The only thing that's missing here is it being rain-wrapped, which would mean that not even lightning would illuminate it. This thing destroyed a hangar, homes, 
and a mobile power plant. The mobile power plant is the two damaged photos here in the left and right. A six block area of homes was straight up just gone. With some foundations, the silage, and I even heard or even saw a case of, at least uh, it was written down, sorry, not a photo, unfortunately, of a foundation slab being removed. Just one, though, however, just one. This thing completely decimated mobile homes, wrapped their frames around trees, caused some relatively immense ground scouring, debarked or snapped multiple trees. This thing has one of the longest tornado tracks in the entirety of the United States as well. I believe it is 214 kilometers long, which is, I'm going to get this wrong, 135 miles? I probably got that wrong. Sorry about that. Still, nonetheless, a very, very long track. The Gossel Kansas F5 is and the Heston F5 too are examples of information discrepancies with tornadoes. This thing, I only have one source that says that it was uh, 301 miles per hour, and that is the NWS. The 301 is 484 kilometers per hour. This thing merged with the uh, Heston F5, so the Gossel tornado came first, and then it was uh, the Heston tornado. This thing would sweep away multiple homes and cause some severe ground scouring from what I saw. However, I didn't find any damaged photos. According to NWS surveyors, there was, quote, extreme F5, end quote, damage. However, again, I cannot find damaged photos from this tornado. I found plenty, a fair few, from Heston, the Heston F5, and the... Uh, photo of the Heston tornado at the notable mentions is one of the only photos that comes up when you search the Gossel F5. It's like, that's not Gossel, that's Heston. Which made this thing very, very frustrating to research as there were practically no sources that gave no information, no damage photos, no practically nothing. Despite how relatively famous these two tornadoes are, just like Andover, there is little information about it, which in, is very, very upsetting. Still, supposedly 301 miles per hour is insane. The Bridge Creek Moor, uh, Oklahoma tornado that happened on the 3rd of May, 1999, is, however, the strongest tornado ever recorded on the face of the Earth. At 302 miles per hour, or 486 kilometers per hour, this tornado reached those wind speeds right before striking the town of Bridge Creek. It hit, of course, therefore, Bridge Creek, southern Oklahoma City, and more, all at F5 strength. Extreme F5 at that. An airplane wing, possibly from Chickasha, was found in Moore, a 38, sorry, 36,000 pound, that's around 18,000 kilo, Rail car was thrown three fourths of a mile, which is nearly a whole kilometer, if I'm not mistaken. And this thing, to, to just you know, put that little cherry on top, nearly hit the Norman NWS. This forced uh, Norman MD NWS to take shelter, and I believe Tulsa NWS took over there. Uh, the good thing about if an NWS uh, sorry, if, an, if a WFO needs to take shelter, weather forecasting office needs to take shelter, is that uh, other WFOs can take over their area as they're kind of meant to be able to overlap. So that is a great thing, and it worked very nicely in this case. It also didn't help that Norman NWS is also the uh, where the NWSS uh, PC is, the Storm Prediction Center is located. So uh, Tulsa, if I'm not mistaken, had to take over that as well. So that was, um, it was interesting, but it worked. It worked. This thing was insane. This this tornado photo, that is the Bridge Creek Moor F5 up there, reaching around a mile wide, that's around its peak width right there in the upper, uh, sorry, in the top middle, that is, in my opinion, one of the most iconic tornado photos of all time. 
that is just an insane tornado. There's no other way to top it off as this as that tornado is the strongest ever recorded. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> so what did we see from these four behemoths? We saw that one happened in March, two happened in April, and one in May, giving us a grand total of May winning out by just one tornado, a total of two in March, eight in April, nine in May, and one in July. 45% of the tornadoes that we talked about happened in May, 40% happening in April, the remaining 15% happening in March and July. From these four arguably strongest tornadoes recorded, there was less than 100 deaths. However, that is still 97 too many. And 2,030 people were injured from these four tornadoes. Overall, these four tornadoes caused at least 1.1 billion US dollars. However, um, that is not properly adjusted for inflation as I simply just added all of them together. 74 USD and 99 USD are different due to inflation. So, um, there is a, so th there's some discrepancies there. Apologies about that. With that being said, this was definitely a journey. I enjoyed this series a lot. Uh, a ton of research went into each and every single one of these parts. I think I've talked about each and every single one of these tornadoes before, too, which isn't a bad thing. I can go over stuff I didn't mention before. That being said, if this is a type of series that y'all are kind of interested in, I can possibly go over some of the strongest EF4s and F4s that I can find, something like that. Um, interesting tornado records, anything like that. Although that'll definitely uh, be a while before I do that. I thank you all for, for watching this video. I really do. I hope to see you all in the next one, which will be a back to the regularly scheduled program, uh, hurricane seasons, hurricanes, and tornado outbreaks. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you all in the next one.